Hi, Anthony Orion for the Joker 3121 channel. So Anthony Orion, of course, it's more of a stage name because I was trying to use uh, shiny names that people can catch and remember to when they rise up legally and to help. Um, because starving people in the world bother me. Hungry kids in the world bother me because when I was 15, we had no food. Our electricity went off. My mom was missing for a while, and we had no food, and I had to eat dog food. We had a dog named Pirata. Um, she was a part Doberman, part um, Dalmatian. She had like a black patch over her eye like that dog on the Little Rascals. Anyways, um, I would go to school just for the free lunch. I mean, we, you know, I know what it's like to be hungry, and there's no food, and I just it, bo it bothered me a lot. Um, so I just, I never understood. We have all this technology. World hunger could be wiped out like this, but there's, you do your research, you're going to find there's a group of men, trillionaires that run the entire world, and as the Illuminati, and they have a shadow government set up in America. Now, originally the shadow government was set up for protection, because um, if, almost like the Valkyrie thing with Hitler, if, uh, if anyone ever took over the government, there'd be a, uh, a secret government on standby. To make sure that things will be uh, protected and we can bring back um you know america to the shadow government but what happened is corrupt people got in there and um like anything if you don't maintain it it gets uh corrupt like your bread if you wait too long and you don't eat it or you you know it gets mold anything in life if it just sits there it gets rusty gets covered in cobwebs anything gets tainted well sh shadow government turned it out to, um, you know, to get infiltrated by a bunch of uh, evil men. If you don't believe in evil, uh, you need to know evil does exist. And uh, what they've been doing now is uh, because the American people are asleep, the American people are so busy just trying to pay their bills and live their life, you know, and that this government, the shadow government, is completely out of control. They're taking the taxpayers' money, and um, they're taking billions of dollars, if not trillions of dollars, and they're running these gang stalking programs throughout the entire USA. And what they'll do is they look for vulnerable people that are uh, more like hermits alone, secluded, and they'll move in across the street or next to you, and they'll start using... Uh, sound weapons on you, they do all kinds of beta testing to see how you react to stuff to, because they keep files on, on reactions, your reactions to what they're doing to you for future operations because the long-term goal is to set up a new police force which is nothing but undercover uh, police. They're going to be everywhere. That's, that's the, the, the goal. Is they have a, sort of like a Germany system with the um, BSS um, who who were the ones that would come out? I gotta watch Hogan serials again. <laughs> they had a, you know they had a police that would actually you know arrest you, and they would put you in a concentration camp or throw you to the front line. Well, anyways, America has been studying that through the through the um, the black programs, a sort of uh, undercover police force. That's that's uh, I I don't think anyone knows how big this is, and it. You know, it's definitely has a lot of regular police that are have been infiltrated and that are um, supporting these programs and helping to keep these programs under hush hush with the public. These programs, now what they do with the gang stalkers is they'll, they'll, they'll do a lot of stuff. They'll hack into your computer. They'll hack into your accounts. They'll steal money out of your accounts. I never stole money out of my account, never. But they'll do that to other people, and they'll they'll um come in your house when you're not home, move stuff around. I mean, this is, I learned this from other gang stalking videos, but I've learned that I am actually a victim of gang stalking. I've been gang stalked. Um, this might go back all the way to 1973, 74. When I was three years old, my sister was four or five. We were taken down to a canyon by seven older kids, ranging from 12 to 17, where they undressed us, they molested us, they made us eat sand with pee in it. Um, and we barely escaped, and the psychiatrist made them come over and, and play with us. They told our mom that it would be a great idea if they wanted us to forgive them 
it was and forgiveness is very important. So yeah, after that, they uh, tried to set our place on fire. Um, when I was 10 years old, I got a call from a man, and he said, I'm watching you. I know you're home alone. I'm going to be watching you the rest of your life. I'm, I might come in and just grab you. That's what he told me. I was 10 years old, 1980. I was sitting on the couch eating a bowl of cereal. Now, in 84, 85, I was about 14, 15. I was eating a bowl of cereal at night, watching Tales from the Dark Side, and I felt a weird vibe, so I turned left to look at the window, and there was a man sitting in the window looking at me. It was a white man, male, uh, blondish hair. And I'm in an all-black neighborhood, blacks and Mexicans, you know, mostly blacks, a few Mexicans. But this, it was kind of weird to see a white guy just sitting on the fence looking at me at 11 o'clock at night. I grabbed a bat, ran out there, he was gone. Then when I was 17, I got my girlfriend pregnant, she was 15. Um, we moved across the street and we rented a room from a, a friend. And um, we heard one night, we were going to bed, we heard someone like at the window messing around. There was like a shelf outside there with a whole bunch of stuff on it. We could hear them like taking the whole shelf apart slowly all night long. You hear them just slowly moving stuff off the shelf. This morning we went out there, the shelf was taken apart and moved away from the wall. Now we thought, okay, maybe it's our friend, right? Because you think, right, your friend, well, he's a little tiny, he's a little skinny, scrawny guy. Well, three months, four months later, we moved down the street into a duplex. I was putting our crib together in, in my son's room. He was about three, four months old. And my girlfriend comes running in the room and goes, Tony, Tony. Come here, there's someone in the window. So I went, I was, whoa, I went into the wind, you know, I went into the room, our room, my and her room, and my son was about three, four months old, he was asleep on the bed, and right just past him was a window, and there was a huge shadow of a man, a huge man, in, about 300 pound man, in the window. And you, you could see it was a side profile, and you could hear him like every once in a while, he was like messing with the window, you could barely hear it. Now, I grabbed a knife, she grabbed a knife, and we stood there all night just watching, and we had no phone. We had no front windows, no peak hole in the front. It was, there was no windows. It used to be a chapel. It was turned into a duplex. There was no windows in the front at all. So we, I was afraid to go out the front door because there could be more people there waiting. So we just stood there and watched this guy mess with the window all night. I was afraid to get close to my son. I was afraid the guy might die to the window. He was huge. And he would jump, he would land on my son and grab me, and it would all be over. At, you know, so I thought I'd better just monitor it from over here, and I don't want him to know that I know that he's there. You know what I'm saying? So we, we were quiet all night, but you could hear him messing with the window. Uh, next morning, we went out there, and the screws were taken out of the window. I told my brother-in-law and uh, my sister, because they lived next door to us, and they started coming over and hanging out with us, and we were on the lookout for this. Six months later, I was smoking a cigarette on my front porch, and I noticed the house on the hill was all lit up, the window, and there was a, like a man standing inside the window. It looked like a man. So I was like, oh, that's creepy. So I went to bed. And about two weeks later, I saw it again, but it was three people this time. So I, I was like, this is freaky. I grabbed my binoculars and I looked up there on the hill. And it was three naked people standing inside the window looking down at my duplex. Looking down at me. So I, I told my girlfriend. Um, next night, we invited my sister over, my brother-in-law over to see this. And there was five people in the window, standing there in, there in the window naked. And we... Uh, they were like, my brother-in-law and sister were freaked out. We flashed the lights. Then they flashed the lights. True story. This really happened. True story. So this could be, you know, the, where the gang stalking started up. Um, it gets even creepier. I mean, it turns out that the people on the hill, the house, belong to our landlord. And my sister went up there to pay rent one day. And she's like, you ought to come over when we're having a pool party. We all sit around and told us. It's weird stuff like that. So that could be where the gang stalking started. Well, me and her broke up in 1990. I moved into the studio apartment, and um, I would go to work and come back, and my lights would be on. So one day I turn off the light. I look. I say, "Okay, it's off." I walked halfway to the bus stop, which is a block and a half away. I turned around, came back, and my light was on again. So anyway, the, about six months later, I moved my older brother in. Things seemed to stop, and then 98, 99 is where things started back up. Um, I'd be missing cash, you know, twenty dollars, sixty dollars, forty dollars, eighty dollars, you know. Um, one night I was in the kitchen eating. I never thought someone was coming in here. There'd be like uh, strings, like these cone things on my carpet, you know, like strings that twirl up into like cone shapes. Um, one night I came into the kitchen to eat, and I looked up this window here, my, my kitchen window, and I looked over Texas Street. That tree wasn't there. 
there was a, a man standing there at the end of the driveway just staring over at this window here. So that was freaky. So I came back in an hour later and he was still standing there staring at the window. So now I turn the light off and I'm like looking. The guy was out there for like three, four hours just staring at my window. And, you know, I'm like, you know, you know, I was young. I was, you know, I, I, I maybe I should have called the cops. I don't know. But this is where, you know, to me, the signs of the gang stalking where, you know, um, I was taking care of my aunt's house down, downstairs one time and she was out of town and I heard this noise. I got up and looked and I saw she had, she has these, uh, these, uh, what they call those doors, those French doors in her dining room with those really weird windows, those real thick windows where if you put your hand in the face, you know, everything's all deformed. And I saw these like lights on the window. So I looked out her front door window and I saw seven, eight cop cars out there in front. And then I could hear them like walking down the driveway toward the back door of her house. I'm thinking, this is really weird. So I go into my old room where I lived when I was 11 years old and I could hear them walking on the side of the house and I, and I just freaked out. So I went and I turned to keep my aunt's TV off. I went back out toward the, you know, to the house, to the front of the living room again, and they were all just taken off. And you say, okay, those are just cops. They probably got a call. Somebody was in there. They were checking it out. Here's, here's the weird part, though. No one ever rang the doorbell. No one ever knocked on the door. They just kind of like circled the house and put the lights on in the windows and then just got in their cars and left. True story. This is a true story. that I hear in gang stalking videos that police officers and um, firemen are in on this stuff. And I believe it. I believe it. From, just from the stuff I've seen myself. I mean, just really weird stuff. One time I was knocking on the door selling the newspapers, uh, selling subscriptions, and um, in, in Imperial Beach, and me and my friend were working together doing, uh, it's called double teaming, and I'd go to one door, he'd go to another door, and, and the fire department was walking behind us, you know, talking to people at the door or whatever, but the guy that was leading the thing, this huge guy, he was like looking at me like this, you know, and going, he's making really weird faces, and, and it bothered me, I thought, this guy is creepy. I never thought, you know, possibly gang stalking, but every door we went to, they were like, like, like tailing us. Could all this stuff be coincidence? Sure, fine. But the, the stuff inside my house, missing money, the strings in the cones, um, the, the guy out there staring in the window. I mean, come on now. Some of the stuff here points to gang stalking early on. Um, so yeah, I think people out there, if you're being gang stalked, you know, you should go door to door, let people know what's going on, uh, get flyers out there. You know, we need to come together as a communities and ask the FBI, why aren't they, real, you know, releasing this information to the public? You know, why? Also, I heard that these are giant black programs and that's going to be the new police. They're going to be like, they want to grow and grow. And they just plan to eventually have it set up where they can just torture everybody. They can set anybody up they want to set up for crimes. They, they're going to use weapons on them without other people knowing about it. This is kind of what Hitler had planned out. This was kind of his dream. So if you can find a way to make money to reveal the truth to the public, you get more truthers out there, flyers, a website, PayPal, sell some products, let them know, let the public know what they're doing, and you can find a way to get revenue going and bigger and bigger and bigger to get the information out to the public. You can possibly stop this. I would say, my own opinion, I would say uh, it's very important if you're a truther to be with Jesus Christ because this is more of a demonic... Um, attack from the spiritual realm. For, I mean, that's just, that's my belief. I would say if you're going to be a truther, um, I would completely surrender to Jesus Christ because the, uh, the people that run the world and the shadow government is definitely into the occult. Thanks for watching.